lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? So what did you decide to, to drink? I got the Sensei. Is that, is that what it's called? The Sensei? Sensei? Oh, yeah, yeah, Sensei. The sensei. Japanese stuff. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah, poured me up a little bit of that. Okay. Well, thanks for bringing me dinner, because... I hadn't had anything since breakfast. Ah, I hear you. And I was getting kind of hungry. And I didn't want to cook. Yeah. Even though I thought some chicken. I hear you. But I might have to cook it anyway, (laughs) unfortunately. Just just so it don't go bad. Yeah, at least I don't have to, um, you know, after we finish this and get everything uploaded and so forth, then spend, you know, 40 minutes cooking and then finally eat. Because by then I would... be famished. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. That's a good word. So where were you on September 11th? Uh, I was uh, in uh, Dunwoody. Yeah. Um, on the north side of Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, just inside the perimeter. Okay. Actually, technically, I wasn't in, in Dunwoody. I was, I was technically actually still in Atlanta. But <clears throat> yeah. And uh, I was living in a duplex with a couple of guys. And I was working uh, um, 3.30 to midnight shifts yeah. at that time. And I uh, got a call really early in the morning from um, from a guy telling me what had happened. Or actually, uh, he said, uh, are you watching TV? And I said, no, of course not. <laughs> yeah, why would I be watching TV, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's like, you need to turn it on. I was like, well, what channel? He said, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. And so I did, and that's that's how I found out. Wow, yeah, I um I woke up and went in the living room, like pretty well. This was right after I had, so I had graduated. Mm-hmm. This was kind of like the sun, like the guys had all kind of went back to school and whatnot, mm-hmm. and so I was still kind of figuring out what I was doing. So I was living at home, and um I walk into the living room and I walk in like right after the first plane had hit, yeah. and Dad's watching TV like. And we're both kind of having the conversation, like, what's mm-hmm. going on? Mm-hmm. And and then the second plane hit while we were standing there, and it was like, oh, crap. Like, yeah. by then, like, now we know what's <laughs> going on. Like, there's something, this is this is a big deal. Like, this is scary. Yeah, as I recall, so I missed both the plane impacts. Yeah. Um, as I recall, uh, it wasn't long after I started watching, though, that the first tower came down. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. And, um, yeah, it was hours later when the first tower came down, right? Because mm-hmm. I remember it. Yeah. 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 Oh, well, after the after the crashes, it was. Yeah, a few I mean, hours. I was yeah. working three thirty to midnight shift. I'd, yeah. I'd gone to bed at like six a.m. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I hear you. Yeah, it was probably yeah. ten thirty or something before I got woken up with the phone ringing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's you know me and I got <clears throat> my roommates up and uh, we watched just kind of dumbstruck for a while a while oh yeah. yeah i mean that's exactly i mean i can remember just like i watched t- the tv all day that day i had to go to work i was working mm-hmm. um in retail like i am now and i finally had to go to work and close that night but um like i didn't want to go away from the tv like yeah. it was just because it was just so crazy yeah well i remember the the next thing is that me and one of my roommates started packing up yeah um to go up there yeah. Uh, cause yeah, I wasn't an EMT anymore, but I had been, yeah. um, and, uh, and you know, we just wanted to help out. So we actually packed up, we had work to do, uh, I mean like to go to, he yeah. was also working three thirty to midnight. Um, yeah. and so we packed up and packed up the car, went to work, uh, with the intention of driving through the night after work yeah. and, um, and heading up there. Yeah. Um, and it was sometime while we were at work that they announced that they were like, please do people don't come don't up come here. up here yeah. yeah so we didn't yeah. but um yeah. well that's one of the things that's most vivid about this the whole 9-11 experience and that's something that's and i may have talked about this on the podcast before i may not have i don't know but it's something that i've always kind of found strange is right after 9-11 like that day like everybody went and started giving blood like that was like a big thing like oh i did every, not do that I didn't do it either. I don't give blood generally, but <laughs> it, I, but I remember it being something that everybody did. And for like months and months afterwards, the blood banks had these huge surpluses mm-hmm. because everybody went and gave blood because they thought they were going to need it. Yeah. And obviously they didn't. 
Um, but I always thought that that was something that would be like part of 9-11, like that everybody would still go do that. Oh, and, yeah, like a traditional yeah, thing. Yeah, like a kid. tradition, like, you know, because yeah. that was something that was at the time, and you don't even hear about it anymore. It's never not yeah. something that's never even really mentioned. But, like, that's a very vivid memory of mine about 9-11 was everybody going and doing that. Yeah. And I thought it was cool. Like, I thought it was a neat thing. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of sad that that didn't become, like, a tradition. Yeah. So you, you heard it here, everyone. It's kind of late today. But on yeah. the 20th anniversary of 9-11, yeah. remember to go get blood. I think it, at the time, I just I thought it was like just one of those things that was just going to happen, you know, that yeah. would just naturally would, would come out of 9-11, and it, it just didn't, and it was always been strange to me. Mm-hmm. So, um, Well, we, we've talked about the disastrous aftermath uh, yeah. on in various aspects on a number of podcasts, so we're going to skip that today. Yeah, yeah. It's a sad day. Like I say, it's it's something that, you know, whether what no matter what you believe as far as i mean the aftermath is like i say as the wars and everything mm-hmm. is it's just a tragedy all the way around man i hope we're not under attack yeah <laughs> <laughs> like we're sitting here talking about 9-11 and then that happens yeah. i don't know if y'all could hear that but <laughs> i don't see how you couldn't have that was like a low-flying <laughs> helicopter that was yeah. that was weird um, so it doesn't happen a lot here. <laughs> no, it doesn't, which makes you wonder. <laughs> oh. So, uh, yeah, um, I don't know. The uh, what I like to focus on on nine eleven um, was the those kind of things. Uh, everybody going out to give blood. Yeah. Um, you know, my roommate and I packing up to try and go up there and help. And yeah. lots of other people did that. As, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, that's know, the reason they told y'all not to come. Yeah. Was because everybody in the country mm-hmm. was doing the same thing. Um, you know, it, regardless of the circumstances that led to it and, and what happened afterwards, yeah. um, I think that those are like, those are my positive memories about it is that it did, the, it, it made clear that there really is um, a, a community spirit. Absolutely. of Americans. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I, I appreciate that aspect of it. And I, I yeah. would like to see us focus on that Absolutely. going forward, which is why I really like your give blood idea, although I'm still not giving blood. But <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm not either. So I, I can only advocate from a position of I won't actually go do it myself. <laughs> but everybody should. But, but I think it's a good thing to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. So No, I like it. Um, well, we, uh, we promised to talk about the RNC, yeah. uh, this week. And so that's what we'll do, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I, I actually like, we were listening to the last few minutes of the Trump speech right before we started recording here because, yeah. um, I was too lazy. Well, because I'm a procrastinator, actually, that's really the, the reason yeah. I knew I had till now, essentially to listen to all the speeches to that I wanted to done. listen to. And, <laughs> You know. So you waited till the last minute. Of course, of course. Um, I would have finished a little earlier if uh, if you'd brought dinner earlier. Yeah, well, you yeah, know, okay. it is what it is. <laughs> um, but okay, g- like general thoughts. Um, there were things that came up regular. Okay, so I absolutely agree with you that the production value was much better. Yeah. Um, the energy was much better. Um, it just had a positive feel to it. Yeah. I mean, it was it was really, it's really more what I would want from a campaign if I was involved with it. Yes. I mean, I, 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 I I'll say that. Like, I mean, that's I, I, that's what I would want the energy to be. There was, you know, there was certainly some criticism in attacking the left, um, of course, but the the overall feel was of look what we've done and look what we can do. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's, like I said, that's what you want, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's, that's a good position to be in. Well, I mean, I, I keep saying this and, you know, right now, again, the pollsters are saying that Biden's got it. Um, of course. Heard it before. Yeah. Uh, but I, I just don't see, I don't see it. And I'll say once again that, you know, the, in the end, the, like we said last week, the DNC was just about, it wasn't about, um, creating a, a message about what they will do. It was just about get Trump out. Yep. 
Um, and that's just, the exact same thing that Hillary did is the, the I'm not him yep. um, campaign slogan. <laughs> May as well be. I mean, right. it was I'm with her, but yeah, it's but still pretty not. much the same <laughs> yeah. thing. Um, so I'm not him, and Biden's doing the same thing. I'm not him, and uh, I just it's not it's not inspiring in any way. Yeah. And uh, while I realize that Biden isn't nearly as detestable a character as Hillary Clinton, yeah. well, at least not on the surface. Like you dig into he, his he history, comes, yeah. and he's like, but he's not. But he like, comes the personality off as, is the, yeah. as the nice guy. Yeah. Um, but he's also, and he, Trump is incredibly divisive. There's no doubt about that. Oh yeah. Um, people love him. People hate him. But people love him, and they'll get out and vote for him. And people hate them, and they might get out and vote against them. They might. Yeah. Um, well, probably of, a lot of them will. A lot of them will, but are you going to get the no- enough numbers to put you over the edge with that? Yeah. And I think that's really what it comes down to. Well, and that's what it has to be, because there's not people that love Biden in the exactly. same way. Like, exactly. people aren't excited to go vote for Biden. Hell, his own <laughs> campaign slogan was uh, settle for Biden or whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, I don't That's not exactly it's right, not, but it was something yeah, like that. Yeah. I mean, that's that's just <laughs> pathetic. Exactly. Like, so. Which, which is a shame. They had such a large field, not that I liked any of them other than maybe Tulsi, but. Um, well, Tulsi had her problems too, but. Oh, absolutely. She had her problems. But I mean, they, to have that many people that have chose from and end up with Biden. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and then he selects as his vice presidential candidate, the person who well, the dumped little... in the polls to 1% and dropped out. Yeah. The... Oh, obviously they like her. <laughs> right. Like, oh, it's just, I don't, none of it makes any sense. No. So. I mean, maybe they're counting on the crash again, and they don't want to be in office. Maybe it's all planned that they to lose. <laughs> maybe. Well, I mean, if it, if that's the case, they're doing a good job. Yes. From where I'm sitting. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's it. Like, I I can't really distinguish a difference in a campaign between them being terrible and them trying to lose. Like yeah. to to me, the I wouldn't be able to identify. I. Like I can't identify yeah. which one they're doing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's the truth because mm. it's, it's just that bad. But back to the RNC. <laughs> yeah. we, we criticized the DNC enough last week. Probably <laughs> right. it's time to criticize the RNC. Okay. Although there's less to criticize. I mean, it was as at least as full of propaganda as the oh, the other one. Without um, question. But it it just had a so much more positive feel to it. Um, the and I, you know, it's I was surprised about this because you tend to think of the left as being the um, the more uh, emotionally driven side, yeah. and so I was surprised to find that that the speeches from the RNC there were more of them that were emotionally driven and were really powerful in, in their way. Yeah. Um. There was uh the the uh, Cuban guy. Um, Maximo Alvarez. Yep. Um, his, I, I mean, I don't have a whole lot to say from the specifics of his speech, um, but it was a powerful message yeah. of of hope, of the American dream, of exactly what they're trying to sell to people. Yeah. Um, and uh, and there was some. He did say give some line in there about um, how if he if he gave away everything he had that it wouldn't equal 1% of what he'd been given through his freedom here in this country. Yeah. Um, and that was just like, like that got me a little yeah. choked up. You oh know? yeah. Um, absolutely. There was, uh, um, I, I knew I should have written her name down. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, uh, the lady who was pardoned, Oh, there you Actually go. Alice saved Johnson. Us. Thank you. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> because, uh, uh, to me, her speech stole it as far as I was concerned. Yeah. That was the best speech of the convention to me. And it just, just the same way as the one, what's his name that you just mentioned? Maximo. Maximo. Yeah. I mean, she had me the same way. And maybe it's just because that's such an important issue to me, mm. criminal just being criminal justice reform. Yeah. But that speech got me, man. Like, it really did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I get it. Uh, Nick Sandman. Yeah. Um, the uh, The high school kid that... Oh, was yeah. um you know dumped on the by Covington the press kid, yeah yeah um his 
you know, he, he's not a great speaker. Um, I mean, he's, he's like 17 or 18 or something like that. Yeah. Um, this is a really big audience <laughs> <laughs> for him. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, he made a really strong point about, um, the narrative driven dishonest media. And he made it in a way that really made you feel for him. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you well, know, as you should, I mean, that's what happened to him was ridiculous. Like mm-hmm. there, there's no excuse for that. There's no cause for that. Yeah. And drawing the parallel with how they've treated Trump over the last four years was, was, strong. was accurate. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, to me it's accurate. Well, I, I think so too. But even if you don't think that it was like, you have this it's really hard. solid example, yeah. um, in how he was and how he was proven to be yeah. uh, badly mistreated. Exactly. Um, to the point that several media companies have settled. Have like <laughs> shelled out some out. dough over it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so. There was, uh, um, you know, some of the, uh, uh, some of the black um, politicians that they had speak. Yeah. Were really good. Um, I really liked uh, Daniel Cameron. He was the uh, Kentucky attorney general. Um, and he, like, both he and Tim Scott gave really excellent speeches. Yeah. Um, I, I enjoyed both of their speeches. Uh, they were they were both powerful in their own way. Um, you know, uh, Daniel Cameron he pointed out Biden's racism, which I thought was a, a like a really a good move, yeah, um, political move in terms of talking about uh, you know the "you ain't black" comment mm-hmm. and um, the uh, Hispanics being you know more varied culture. Um, and all that, um, you know, uh, Tim Scott, I, I can't remember if it was him or Daniel Cameron that said, uh, you know, well, uh, I, I am black and I'm <laughs> voting for Trump right. and I, you know, you know, who are you to tell me? Yeah. Um, and then, and I do have to say like Tim Scott had a, uh, this comment about, and like his was just a neat story. Yeah. Um, you know, poor kid in South Carolina. Is that right? I think it was South Carolina. Um, yeah. You know, that had, that, you know, dared to go after what he wanted. And now he's, uh, he's a representative there. Right? Yeah. Um, and he, but he did make this comment that after having been in Congress for 10 years, I think, um, that he, he knows now that he's not the only one in Congress to fail civics. Oh, that dude, that had, had me man. rolling, man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you were so right. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny. I, I got a kick out of that. Um, and, mm. you know, and then there was like the bad side of this. So, uh, so of course, that was one of the big things. Um, I, I listened to Kellyanne Conway and Kaylee McEnany. Um, they both had strong speeches i thought particularly yeah. kaylee's um i didn't catch kaylee's i mean i'll usually watch her she does the press briefings or whatever yeah i and mean so that's I, why i watched oh, her she i get a kick out of her oh i enjoy watching those i yeah. didn't realize she had i must have <clears> missed her when i was watching them but um i enjoy her press briefings man she's she's on top of things yeah man. she's uh she's got some sass it's oh, great yeah, i love it man um yeah, and she's so well prepared, and that's what makes it so interesting. Yeah. To I mean, she's like she sticks to her points. She's you oh, know, yeah. she's got a message, and that's what <laughs> and that's you know, what you're going to get. Yeah. I don't agree with the way uh, press briefings are handled, or the way what press secretaries do now, which yeah. is just propagandize for the president. Um, you know, as the uh, as the great William Grigg called them, the the spokes liar, the White House spokes liar. <laughs> the, yeah, the spokes liar. Um, but <laughs> if you're going to handle all this, if that's what the press secretary is going to be, yeah. she's got to be one of the best. She's, she's the best I've seen. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, without um, like hands down, she's uh, way better than um, what was his name, John something, the Davy guy from uh, the Obama White House, John something. Uh, I remember him. Like, he was terrible. He'd just, like, stutter through everything, and then when he got caught in a lie, he would just, like, well, that's not next. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) right. He was terrible. He didn't handle any of that very well. Um, But her her speech was about uh, pre-existing conditions in the healthcare system. Um, uh, apparently there's a, like a long history of breast cancer in her family oh, okay. and, uh, and she's had a, a preventative mastectomy. Um, yeah. and so that's what it was about. And like, you know, I, I can't relate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, 
Um, but, uh, you know, both of them talking about the opportunities that they were given by Trump yeah. and how Trump um, doesn't allow like a second class citizenship approach to the women. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you're in, in you're in. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so there was a real strong between um, between the various uh, minorities um, and women. Yeah. So I refuse to call them minorities. <laughs> yeah. um, I say that I, I probably <laughs> call them minorities all the time. Anyway, um, to, you know, push this like Trump is not a racist. Trump is not sexist. Yeah. You know, Trump is not a xenophobe. Well, and all um, of this is just made up. I mean, it's just I don't know of any other way to put it like uh, it's beyond just what was what I saw at the RNC. Mm -hmm. Like, I just I don't believe the man is a racist. <laughs> like, I, just, I, I don't either. It, it, I don't think he cares about anybody. It's not specifically yeah, exactly. <laughs> minorities like, that he doesn't yeah, care about. Does, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he cares about one person. It's Trump. I yeah. do believe he cares for this country. Like, I, mean, I believe I, he cares for his family and his family. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, I agree. I, I think I mean, so too. I, I think he and I think he does what he thinks is best for the country. Now I disagree with him about some of those things. Yeah. But I do think that his heart's in the right place. Like yeah. I don't have any question about that. Well, I, and I heard somebody talking about it and they made like a really good point, I thought. I can't remember who it was, but it might have been Dave Smith. Yeah. Um talking about, well, you know, this is a guy who who speaks his mind. Yeah. Like all the time, yeah, like. uh, he doesn't pull punches. He speaks his mind all the time. I mean, you talk about um, racist dog whistles and so forth. Do you think that we could have spent all this time listening to Trump and he wouldn't have said something that was overtly Over racist yeah, exactly. by now? You know, if it was, in he's there, not dog whistling, man. Yeah, he's if it was that's in not there, what he does. Yeah, if it was in there, it would have came out. Like, you think just... Trump could be a secret racist? No, I yeah, don't. exactly. Um, and yeah. and I agree with that. Like the guy, he doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't hold back. I just yeah. don't. I don't think he's ashamed of anything that he feels. And he's completely stream of consciousness. Like, yeah. I mean, he will talk about stuff at the podium. Just whatever comes to his mind is he's thinking out loud up there. Like yeah. a lot of the time. Yeah. I mean, they. You talk about all the lies, and he certainly told plenty oh, well, of lies. Yeah. Um, but like, I think that he's the most transparent president we've had. Yeah. Because eventually it's going to come out what he thinks. Yeah. Between Twitter and him just like talking, talking, talking. Yeah. Like there's I, not a lot of secrets. <laughs> exactly. I, I agree. So. Um, and he, there's a, a level of respect that I have for that. I really appreciate people that speak their mind. Yeah. And you know, you know where he stands. There's yeah. never a question of, you know, where, what his opinion on a subject is. Yeah. You know? And I try to be one of those people, actually. Yeah. Like, I, you know, damn the consequences. I, yeah. I believe what I believe, and I'm not ashamed of it. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is why I'll never run for office again after doing this podcast <laughs> for a year and a half. All right. <laughs> um, so uh, in, into some of the specific... Oh, actually, like on that point. Um, well, I mean, I guess it, we could pick it up elsewhere. But, um, you know, one of the things that came up... Uh, there were several points that came up over and over. Like for yeah. what you were saying about the DNC controlling the message. Yeah. Um, and that's absolutely true. I felt like they did a better job of that at the RNC. And yeah. that's why I have fewer notes on what specific people said, because they all pretty much got up there and said the same thing. Yeah. I mean, there were people that were focused on a particular point that they were trying to make. Um, you know, like, uh, Kaylee talking about the, uh, preexisting conditions and the healthcare stuff. Um, you know, all, yeah. everybody they all had, had their, their own focus. Yeah, exactly. But, but the points were. that were made were made over and over and over by multiple speakers. I thought that yeah. they actually did a really good job of controlling the message. Um, the message that they were putting out there. Yeah. And so there are these points that came up over and over again. So not racist, not sexist. We yeah. had this really great economy pre COVID, especially for minorities, not racist. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, one of the things that I really appreciated, uh, you know, on that point was that they, there was still a lot of division creating, um, identifying people by groups at the DNC, of course. Yeah. Um, and the RNC, they, they talked about race and ethnic background and, and so forth, but they always did it in terms of, you know, we want great things for everybody. Yeah. Um, black, white, Hispanic Not men, focused women, on yeah. specific groups. Yeah. I didn't feel like they were trying to play these Pander. various groups. 
Well, no, well that too, but um, yeah. I didn't feel like they were trying to play the various groups against each other in the same way that I felt like they were at the DNC. Yeah. Well, and and that's part of what the Democrat Party at least today does. That's true. I mean, it just it is. So. Um. On the specifics, like uh, one of the first ones that I watched was Don Jr. Um, I thought that he, uh, so he identified the, you know, massive criticisms that the Democrats um, give to the U.S. in general, yeah. present history, etc. Uh, like, um, but I, I thought he he mischaracterized what they're really attacking. Um, like he he was talking about. Uh, they're attacking freedom of thought, um, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and the rule of law. Well, there's evidence to support those assertions. Yeah. I don't really feel like that's what they're actually. They're not. They're not attacking freedom of thought. They're attacking what they see as, um, as a, a negative assault on somebody else. Yeah. Right. Um, and the same thing with the speech thing is that they're you know they're attacking the espousing of hate or whatever. I mean, yeah. like I, I think that not for all of them, certainly, but I, I think that it comes from a good place. It comes from this, um, feeling of like trying to protect these various groups from, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, now I, I see that as being very, um, condescending personally. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, oh, well, you, you poor minority. Um, how could you possibly stand somebody calling you a name? Well, we'll take care of you. Don't you worry. You don't have to, you don't have to deal with this. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> you know, but I do think that it, it was kind of unfair the way he characterized what they're doing, what they're doing. Yeah. Um, you know, they're not attacking the rule of law. They're, um, attacking the, uh, the abuse of that power. Yeah. Um, which I agree with. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, um, and he, he said something, he said, uh, everything starts with safety and security and you can't have anything else without it. And that <laughs> really stuck with me though, yeah. because like, that's a dangerous approach. Um, Absolutely. and you know, of course my point would be like the, that important thing, everything starts with liberty. You that you can't have there. anything you else without it. That point, yeah. yeah. And this is, you know, starting with safety and security is actually an attack is a limitation of liberty. Yeah. Um, not to say that there should be absolutely no limitation. Uh, well, okay. So, and I think of the difference between freedom and liberty. Yeah. Um, I always use Chris Ann Hall's uh, definitions. I'm not sure where she got them from, or or how she came or, up with them. Yeah, yeah, or how she came up with it, but. Um, you know, freedom, of course, is the ability to do anything. Yeah. Like you, you have the freedom to do anything. Um, and she always says that, that liberty is freedom plus morality. Okay. And, and I like that yeah. distinction. Yeah. Um, so, you know, your, your liberty ends, uh, at the point where you're infringing on somebody else. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, the everything starts with safety and security, and you can't have anything else without it. Like the, this is, it's this concept that has us trying to run a world empire. Well, that that gives you. It makes me feel like you're giving that control over to the government mm -hmm. for protection. Yeah, and, which is never a good road to go down. Yeah, um, and it was never the intent. No, no. Yeah. I mean, it just makes me think of prisons. Like, I mean, <laughs> you can lock somebody in a cage and still not be able to protect them. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, look at Epstein. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, and so I thought of uh, iRobot, uh, the, yeah. mo the movie, the not movie. the story. Yeah. Um, the story was different, but, and better. I saw the movie. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you know, and the, in the end, the, um, the, uh, I guess the purpose of that centralized AI was to keep people safe. And protection. in the end, what it decided was that the best way to do that was to just lock you all in your homes. Yeah. I mean, which is what we're dealing with right now with the coronavirus stuff. Well, we're not dealing with that, but a lot of places are. A lot are. of people are, though, yeah. Um, so You know, uh, France was uh, one of the first to lock down, and they were so proud of their numbers, and their numbers are spiking now, and so now they're locking down even harder and, like, yeah. you know, fining people for being out on the street without a mask and yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Um, 
Like that's that's what happens when you start with safety and security. Yep, exactly. Yeah, is that you you lose your liberty. Yep. There's <clears> no way to keep it. You, I mean, because you, you can't live in the bubble. I mean, you know. Yeah, you're you're responsible for your own safety and security. You got your own risk assessment to do. Exactly. Well, and that's what it comes down to. That's a good mm-hmm. way to put it. Is it comes down to risk assessment. Yeah. You know, and that's and risk to, tolerance. And yeah, and that's up to each person. You know. Yeah. Um, there were some memes that came up over and over again that were not true. Um, the first time I came, so Nikki Haley had been the ambassador to the UN. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she, I don't remember a whole lot about her speech except for using the, um, you know, attacking the Obama administration for the JCPOA. That's the Iran nuclear deal. Yeah. And, uh, how, you know, that, Trump's trying to protect this country, and so he threw away the nuclear deal. And what did the Obama administration do? They just sent Iran pallets of cash. The pallets of cash, man. How many times does this have to be debunked? <laughs> I, well, we did send them pallets of cash, but it was their cash. But it was their money. Well, that, no, I know we sent them to them, but like you say, like it was their money. Like, it was we their had cash. stolen from them. It was, uh, you know, or they, frozen or whatever. You yeah, we'd call it. frozen it. Like, I, if I recall correctly. Um, they had made an oil sale to France, had delivered the oil, had not received the um, payment for it yet, and we froze the that money. Counts, yeah. So essentially, we helped France steal oil from Iran 30 years ago or whatever, yeah. um, and we just finally uh, got gave them their money yeah. without interest. Which was part <laughs> of how we were able to get them to sign on to the agreement. Was right. Because that was in the, that was in the agreement was we want, they wanted their money back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is one of the 30 few years things, later, they still wanted that money. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this was one of the few things that I really thought that Obama did well. I do believe that the JCPOA made the world a safer place. Yeah. Um, because it took away, as much as anything, it's because it took away an excuse for the U.S. to go to war in yet another country in the Middle East. Yeah. Um, and if you wonder what the issue with Iran is, what you really should do is look at a map. Yeah. Um, because what you will find is that the path from east to west travels one of two directions. Through Iran, or like if you're going by land anyway. Yeah. Um, it travels through Iran or through Russia. Yeah. And we know we can't take on Russia, or we know it's a really bad idea anyway. Yeah. Um, and at least if we can keep Iran away from nuclear weapons, which they weren't really, After. they weren't ever really pursuing anyway, yeah. um, then at least uh, we've got a better chance of taking on Iran if we want to secure the land route from the east to the west. Yeah. That's really what it's about. Um, but... Anyway, the the point is that this whole pallets of cash, and she wasn't the only one that brought it up. That uh, Richard it. Grinnell, um, who had been, what was he, DNI or something, um, director of national intelligence or something at some point. Anyway, um, he you know he said it too. It, it came up from a couple of people, and it's just yeah. it's just a lie. Yeah. And like I'm, <laughs> and I'm so tired of this lie, and it's because most people don't know. Yeah. Um, they, they just think that we paid them off somehow. No, no, we, yeah. we paid them off with their money. With money that we owed them. Yeah. It's the same thing that, that our government does to you. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, when you sit, when you get that $1,200 check from the government and they, and said, here, have this money on us. That was your money. They're yeah. just giving it back to you. Oh, I can't tell you how many people I've explained to with the with the income tax thing when they oh, get their yeah. refund every year. It's like, oh man, the government gave me this money. No, they gave you your money. Like they didn't yeah. give you their money. They don't have any. Yeah, it, it all it exactly. all came from you. Um, another one of these stupid memes came up with Eric Trump. Um, he was talking about uh, the you know all these. Um, sports heroes taking a knee against the troops. Mm. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I mean, okay. Like they were, they were protesting something specific. It had to do with what we're protesting right now yeah. um, with police abuses. Uh, it didn't have anything to do with the troops. Um, the flag is not synonymous with the troops. Um, and you know, taking a knee was what, what's his name was told by a former serviceman would be the most appropriate thing for him to do. Yeah. Um, this isn't a, this isn't a disrespect to the troops and you know what else? Yeah. If it was, yeah. who cares? 
Well, that's kind of where my thing is, and this goes back to just being all about freedom. You know, I mean, if they don't, if they want to do what they want, if they want to kneel, let them kneel. Like, I mean, that's you know, that's their freedom. Now, I may disagree with it, and I'm, I kind of really, I don't care one way or the other. I'm more with you. Like, they can do whatever they want to do, but you're welcome to disagree with it. But it's their freedom to do what they want to do. Well, I, I do have an issue with this idea that it's like the the greatest of sins to yeah. disrespect the U.S. military. Yeah. Well, um, or the flag, because I'm the same way with the flag. Like, you know, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I don't, I'm not for burning the flag, but I believe there are causes that are worth burning the flag for. Yeah. Well, and our founding fathers did. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They did. And that was a, a perfectly reasonable way of protesting as far as they were concerned. And as yeah. far as I'm concerned, it still is. Uh, me too. And when I was arguing with our, um, our federal representative about it. Yeah. Uh, I, I said, you know, you're so concerned with, um, with protecting the symbol that you're forgetting to protect what the symbol is a symbol of. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like you couldn't put it any better. Like it's so true. And he's, he said something like, I respectfully disagree or whatever, but yeah. anyway, uh, I, this is, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't understand. I, I don't think that we should, um, you know, put the U.S. military on some kind of pedestal where it can't be questioned. Yeah. Because I think there's plenty to question. Oh, and yes. if you look into some of the stuff that goes on within the military, like the the um, sexual abuse and rape stuff, um, you know, of course you have uh, these guys, the uh, some of these special forces guys that have gotten in trouble for just like wantonly murdering. Um, civilians and people and prisoners and so forth and these conflicts overseas. Like there yeah. are some people that deserve some that criticism. Needs some questioning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So, but you can end a lot of that by just bringing these guys home. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> you know. wouldn't that be nice? But that was another thing that he talked about. He was like, you know, this was a, this was one of those things that kept coming up during the convention yeah. was that Trump rebuilt the U S military. Yeah. Now, first off it was never dismantled. Yeah. <laughs> All right. They had fewer, um, people working directly for the military. Like we're, we're government employees because yeah. we moved from a contractor to, um, actual military employee ratio of something like, uh, one contractor for every two or three, uh, soldiers or military men, yeah. um, to something like, uh, seven contractors for every one military man a at this point. I mean, so what they've done is they've, they, this is another way of them privatizing your yeah, um, money. tax money. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But um, anyway, uh, like there was some reductions in the defense buzz budget during Obama's uh, presidency, but the end of his presidency is as high as it ever been until yeah. Trump came into office. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And so, yeah, he increased military funding, but he wasn't rebuilding, rebuilding a, a stripped military. It was not a stripped military. It was still the biggest military that had ever been. Yeah. And then they're proud of the fact that he, uh, he managed to authorize a $720 billion defense budget. That's, <laughs> You know, that's 25 cents out of every dollar you send to the U.S. government. Yeah, <laughs> going, going towards blowing stuff up on the other side of the planet. Yeah, there the, is no threat to you. Blowing yeah. up villages in Afghanistan, great. Yeah, exactly. And, oh, we can't forget destroying irrigation and um, pasture land in Yemen, such as it is. Yeah. Uh, so, and that was another thing that came up, you know, that they were talking about how, um, you know, the his focus on, uh, you know, making these deals and how great it is that, um, that, uh, Saudi Arabia is spending all this money on American military equipment. But what they're doing is they're waging a, a war of genocide in Yemen with it. Yeah. Like, are we proud of that? Really? <laughs> I mean, and I know that, that Trump thinks that this is, you know, it's providing all these jobs and who cares about those Yemenis anyway. Yeah. Um, but it, it's not providing all these jobs. This is one of those seen and unseen issues. Like, okay, they've taken your money away from you so that they can fund this. And it does create some jobs. So their special interests are really obvious, yeah. but where would all that money, where would $720 billion in this economy go if it wasn't going to that? Yeah. All right. It could be going to something good. Yeah. Or that could be entrepreneurs, you know, building <laughs> businesses and doing stuff. Yeah. Um, it, it could be going towards one of the other things he talked about, which is like putting people on Mars. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, yeah. And they talked about that like it was a done deal. I don't I don't remember hearing much about that before this convention, so uh, whatever. And yeah. then, of course, the, the Soleimani killing. Um, and, uh, you know, that was a terrible, that was a, a foreign policy complete blunder. Yeah. Um, you know, we're lucky that we have a military that's five times the size of the next largest military in the world, um, <laughs> or we probably wouldn't have gotten away with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so uh, yeah, I, I got I got a little irritated about the foreign policy stuff. Yeah. Um, I complained about them not talking about foreign policy at all in the Democrat Party. In the Republican Party, it was just schizophrenic. Yeah. Um. So they did talk like so. I listened to Rand Paul. I was fixing to um, say, well, Rand Paul made his speech about you know yeah the the drawing down mm -hmm. at least in his eyes yeah. I mean, he talked about justice reform and um, and a, a less hawkish. I mean, he yeah. didn't say it like this, but my interpretation oh, yeah. was a less hawkish foreign policy. Uh, yeah. Yay! <laughs> I mean, this thing that kept coming up, and so uh, Richard Grinnell did it too. Um, he's, you know, he kept talking about um, Trump didn't start any new wars. Like this is something to be proud of. Yeah. Uh, so do you remember? I think it was Chris Rock had this bit in one of his early comedy specials where he was talking about um, people being proud of things that, that you're supposed to do. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah like, I do remember that bit. I, yeah. I take care of my kids. Yeah, well, you're supposed, well, you're supposed to, to take do. care of them. This isn't something <laughs> yeah. that you deserve praise for. Right. Um, this is something that should be expected. Well, okay, so I didn't start any new wars. Yay! Yay. <laughs> you're not <laughs> you know, supposed like, to start any <laughs> new yeah, wars. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't see that this is a really a, a I mean relatively yeah. speaking yeah he's the first person to not start any new war since like world war ii but yeah. um not that far back but anyway pretty close, it's, yeah pretty, <laughs> pretty close we've been in a, a constant state of war since then yeah um so i mean i guess i gotta hand it to him and i know that there's a lot of pressure on trump to start well, wars all over the place so that, the fact that he's resisted may be something that we actually should give him a little bit of praise for but and that's kind of where Rand paul was at with his speech he, he even mentioned that um that you know trump's trump's um what would you call it like like default is to not like mm -hmm. engage yeah in in all of this mm -hmm. and, and to try to bring troops home um and you can see in any time he's tried to do any of that, he's he's felt he's gotten pushback on. Oh yeah, absolutely. From um, both parties. From everywhere. Yeah. From all around him. Mm -hmm. Um and just kind of as an aside, I heard I think today or yesterday that um that he's making announcements to do pretty big pullbacks as far as Afghanistan and some of the and somewhere else I wanna say. Yeah. Um that he's supposed to be bringing people home. Well, so we'll we've see. heard this before. But I was fixing to say, yeah. this has all um, been said before, and we'll see. Yeah. But Well, and, you know, Richard Grinnell also talked about, you know, that he's brought troops home, but no, he hasn't. Yeah. He's just redeployed he's them just to other places. Them. Yeah, he's moved them around. He's shipped them, yeah. Um, now, of course, his thing was that, uh, you know, we shouldn't be fighting these wars in the Middle East. We shouldn't be fighting these wars in the Middle East. Yes, you're right. But his point was, we shouldn't be fighting these wars in the Middle East. We should be focusing on fighting China. Yeah, yeah, well, that ain't, that's well, not, that's good not idea, what I want to do. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, Can we just like bring these guys home and like keep them here? <laughs> and, and yeah, and I, you know, I do get tired of the fixed pie fallacy stuff yeah. with China. Um, this idea that it, because China is producing cheap goods and shipping them over here, that that hurts Americans. Yeah. It hurts some specific Americans. It hurts some Americans that are trying to build those things here with minimum wage laws as high as they are and, you know, yeah. really powerful unions and whatever it happens to be that's driving prices up. Yeah. Um, but for the, I mean, it's been shown more for than once by economy, though, yeah. yeah. For the for the whole of the economy, the consumer and the producer, yeah. that America saves more by importing Chinese goods yeah. of those things that are cheaper. Yeah, I yeah. mean it is. But the problem is that you spread out that savings over every consumer in the U.S. and it's a tiny little fraction to every consumer. Yeah. Whereas the you know the couple thousand people that lost jobs, that's it hurt That's them. Yeah, yeah, it really hurt. And so those special interests get a lot more attention. Yeah. But for all of, uh, I mean, think of what Walmart has done to the quality of living for, for, for poor people. 
Oh, like yeah. you can complain and complain and complain about how they treat their employees or whatever, but yeah. those employees are eating better and clothing themselves better and having a lot more um, entertainment and so forth because all of those things are so cheap at Walmart. Well, and and as far as the employee end of it, at the end of the day, they they made an agreement to work there. Yeah, you know that's the way I look at it. Yeah, you know. well that's an, and that's a really important point, but it doesn't yeah. seem to matter to to the people. Yeah. 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 Um. So, uh, let's see. What else do I have here? Um, da, 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 da. Oh, okay. So, and Giuliani. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I Giuliani. About Giuliani. Um, I hated his speech. <laughs> I yeah. really did. Uh, it was this highly partisan fear. It was, it was at odds with the, with most of the rest of the convention, I thought. Yeah. Um, I mean, certainly, like there was plenty of partisanship in the convention, but it was kind of, uh, it was kind of malicious. Yeah. Um. It, it had a it had a different feel than than the rest of it. It had this like angry, highly partisan, fear mongering thing uh, about it, and he, he made some reasonable points. Yeah. Um. But it was like really Just abrasive. Felt like it had an abrasive. Yeah. 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 Um. And he, he did say something, though, at the end. He said uh, something about Trump's uh, deep understanding of our system of government. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I was like, yeah, yeah really? Yeah. Uh, is, is that what you want to <laughs> highlight? Because I don't feel like that's, I felt like that was a lie. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I really felt like that was a lie. Yeah, because you, you have to question whether even he believes that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no way he believes that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Has, has Trump ever read the Constitution? I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah, I, right. I, I would really like to know if he's ever read this document that he swore to protect and uphold. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, he, hey, he, did, he didn't read it, but he watched a show on it on Fox. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, he watched a PragerU video on YouTube yeah, or something. There you go. Like, all right. yeah, that counts, right? <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> um, and so, okay. So, and this was the good one. Uh, Ivanka. Ah, uh, yeah. I, so I tried to watch all the Trumps, um, yeah. all, all the actual Trumps. One of them was a uh, daughter-in-law. I didn't watch hers. Um, and, I, you know, I watched Don and Eric, Don Jr. and Eric. And I didn't watch Melania. Um, I just ran out of time. Had to make some yeah. choices. Um, I, I heard that hers was pretty good. I didn't As long as you it, could suffer so. through the accent. Yeah. I don't generally have trouble with that kind of thing, so. Yeah. You know. But um, but Ivanka, Ivanka's was the best speech that I saw. I think I agree. Uh, Tim Scott's was really Tim Scott's was really well delivered too. But yeah. Ivanka was was really good. Um, she just seems to be very good at that kind of thing. Yeah, she's she's just seems to have a natural speaking ability from what I can see. Yeah, doesn't hurt that she's super hot. <laughs> yeah, she's she's really beautiful but, girl. But I can't um, help but I uh, said that on the last podcast. Every time when I watch her speak, I, it's I see Trump. Yeah. Like, I mean, because uh, all, like all the mannerisms are still there. It's just mm -hmm. like, like I had said, it's like putting a, um, what do you call it? Another skin. A up. new avatar. Or <laughs> yeah, whatever, a new yeah, avatar yeah. over the same character. Because <laughs> that's what I saw when I watched that speech. But, yeah. but she is, she's very beautiful and, and she speaks well. Yeah. Um, even though like uh, her, they had her outside. Yeah. Um, and she's got this like kind of thin and I imagine very soft hair. Yeah. Um, and it was just kind of wisping around the whole time. It was very distracting actually. Oh yeah. Well, and she yeah. kept having to pull it out of her face. And so I, I feel like it, like if she'd have had her worn her hair up or back, you know, yeah. um, or if they'd have done it inside that it, oh, yeah. it would have been more impressive to watch because that was distracting. Yeah. Um, it just bugs I, you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just it detracted a little bit from yeah. it. Um, but I thought that she did uh, she did an excellent job. Um, she highlighted family, like she yeah. did a a really good job of highlighting family, and this is yeah. important to conservative households. Oh, um, absolutely. And it's certainly something that you can attack the left on. Um, oh, all day long. It, yeah. All day um, long. She highlighted the political partisanship. Um, just the, you know, even when. Well, she was talking about the child tax credit that she was working on child tax credits a couple of years ago, I guess. And, um, that the, uh, there, she was trying to push, you know, help push something through the legislature and, um, that she got not a single Democrat vote 
for the bill. Yeah. Uh, but they still managed to push it through. But yeah. now the Democrats are trying to push additional child tax credits. Like, yeah. So obviously what she wanted was something that they wanted too, but they refused to back it just because can't, it came from... Can't give him a win. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then she spent some time talking about um, you know, how great it was that he kept his prom. Now she did focus on, um, uh, that's what I should say, actually to preface this. Yeah. She did focus on what he, he's accomplished, yeah. what he said he would do and what he's done. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was really strong, even though I disagree with some of those things. Yeah. Um, actually a lot of those things. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, it does come back to the is that the Scott Horton law that uh, when a, a person's elected to office, they will immediately um, forget all of their good promises and uphold all of their bad promises? Yeah, yeah. yeah pretty much. Um, so she talked about moving the uh, the capital of Israel to Jerusalem, um, that lots of presidents had promised that before and none of them did, and Donald Trump did, and that's true. He did. It's absolutely true. Yeah. And it has created all kinds of problems. Yeah, <laughs> but um, he did it. <laughs> but he did, yeah, he followed through. And then uh, it came up a couple of times, too, this peace agreement in the Middle East, um, this agreement between Israel and the UAE that were already kind of working together, um, and about the uh, essentially about how they would agree to leave out the Palestinians from everything. <laughs> yeah. And the Palestinians were a part of the the agreement, but not a part of the discussion or the, the actual agreeing to the agreement. I mean, it's like... Yeah. It's not, it's not as great as it sounds. This isn't peace in the Middle East. the The UAE and and Israel have been working together to try and and keep the the Shia majorities in Syria and Iran down all this time. Like yeah. they have a common enemy, and what the agreement did was essentially say uh, the UAE say. We don't care what you do to the Palestinians. Yeah. And this is the agreement we'll make on behalf of the Palestinians, but we won't let them take part in this. It is terrible. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, anyway, that's that's that. And then, you know, and then there was Trump's speech, yep. which was long. It was very long. <laughs> um, and it was it was fine. I don't like his canned speeches as much as his. Well, his rally is, type stuff he's, is better. Like he's yeah. he's much better. I mean, he's much more entertaining at those. Yeah. But I still had quite a few laugh out loud moments listening yeah. to it. Yeah. There so. were some there were some good ones. Um yeah. you know, the the bit about uh that they um ally the Democrats ally with the light, but they can't keep the lights on in California <laughs> yeah, and all right. that stuff. I mean, there was some oh. there were some good lines. And uh, um, you know, uh, Biden hugs and yes kisses. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like that one had stuff. me going, man. Uh, I was like, oh, he just said that. <laughs> I mean, he didn't say a whole lot that that wasn't a repetition of things that had been said earlier. Yeah. Um kind of wrapped it all up. Yeah. Um, and so you know, that really wrapped it all up. Um and on top, yeah. and on top of that, um, he went longer than Biden. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> that was a foregone conclusion. Yeah, uh, <laughs> well, there's uh, there's no way that Biden could get up there and talk for an hour and ten minutes. No. Not. Um, by the way, anybody out there that's good at this kind of thing, uh, here's a a job that would get you so many hits on YouTube. Yeah, is if you put together these speeches and you just cut out all the applause breaks. Oh, yeah. I've been looking for this forever. Yeah. I could probably figure out how to do it myself, but you know, limited time. You got to choose what to do with it. Right. Yeah. Um, but if somebody else has the time and the know how to do this, you could get a million hits on YouTube. If you could just reproduce all of these speeches and uh, from all this political yeah. stuff and cut out all the applause breaks. So you just got the speech. Yeah. You cut that speech in half. Yeah. At least. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so to sum up, uh, not racist, not sexist. Uh, he built a great economy before COVID and the Democrats ruining it. Um, he rebuilt the military that hadn't been depleted at all. Uh, Biden loves China and has a corrupt family. Yeah. Okay, um, well, fair. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, you know, Biden's crime bill versus Trump's real justice reform. Yeah. And school choice. School, school choice, choice came up a bunch. It did. Um, and I was kind of happy about that because that was something that I was pushing when I was running for Board of Education. Yeah. And everybody thought I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but I bet they don't think you're crazy now. Well, 
I bet they, they still might. think they're crazy. <laughs> At least some of them are definitely not Trump fans. Yeah, um, well, this is true. So uh, anyway, but that that pretty much is the RNC. Yeah. Um, on the whole, it was much more interesting to watch than the DNC. And I only yeah. watched the speeches. I didn't watch all the, the yeah. junk in between. But. I watched some coverage, um, but and I, I've caught up on the speeches on YouTube too. So yeah, but but I thought I thought it was presented way better. Way more entertaining. Um, in other news, and they didn't talk about this at all, but, oh well, nobody much is. Um, Assange uh, went back into trial um, for extradition this past Monday. Yeah. Um, which was Labor Day here in the U.S. Labor Day? Monday was Labor Day. I yeah. think. Was it Labor Day? Or I always get Labor Day one? and Memorial Day mixed Me up. Um, I think sure it was Labor Day. I think it was Labor Day. I don't actually know. Yeah. <laughs> Where all the socialists celebrated. Yeah. And, uh, and and Assange was back in trial to be extradited to the U.S. to face charges under the Espionage Act. Yeah. Um, I haven't really gotten a lot of coverage out of this um, because they're really limiting access. Oh, yeah. Because of the COVID? That's what they say, Ostensibly, at least. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so there's the, apparently like the first day... Um, they only let five people into the courtroom that weren't like a part of the defense or prosecution or, um, judicial or whatever team. Yeah. Um, and, uh, they put other people in a courtroom next door with like a tiny little monitor and bad sound, uh, uh to try and watch it and, you know, press people and so forth. And then they cut them off partway through because the judge wasn't happy about that, that being decided without her knowledge or something. Anyway. Wow. Um, and, uh, so the, in the coverage that I've seen, and, and I will admit that the coverage that I'm looking at is pretty biased, but I, yeah. I'm biased in that direction. So I'm okay with it in this case. Um, although I haven't seen alternatives, honestly, and I've looked around some, yeah. um, is that he's just kind of being railroaded, um, yeah. that they are, uh, the judge apparently came in with, um, a pre-written decision, uh, about some of the, uh, some of the complaints that the defense was making, yeah. um, listened to, um, the attorneys argue their cases about these objections and then read from the, um, the, st- the decision that she'd already made before she even came in the courtroom that day. Yeah. I, I mean, so what's the point of having, like, I understand that you get like a kind of an outline of what the judicial teams are, are, are going to argue about. Yeah. But, but they've already made a decision before yeah. hearing the arguments. That seems kind of like a kangaroo court. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, and they, uh, you know, they limited the um, testimony that could be made public. Um, you know, there's written statements that are publicly available, sort of, yeah. um, but they didn't allow the witnesses to come in and do like a full, um, reiteration of what of their statements yeah. um and of course you know there's differences Which between how something's written is, down and well and all of this information's already out there right i mean they're not arguing anything that's not already public knowledge or should they be I mean, um i mean well yes and no because this is the point that i would make is that a, a written statement can't emphasize particular aspects in the same way that a spoken word can yeah um, so if you're trying to make a, a point about why something, you know, some legal point about something or, um, about process or about, you know, whatever it happens to be, uh, it is much easier to emphasize the more important aspects when you're doing it orally than when, um, Try when it's it. just written statement. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then also, so they did give them like a little bit of time. Um, they gave them like a half hour defense led witness statements to just kind of, um, go over the, the main tenets of what they knew the prosecution was going to challenge them on. So the thing, so the only things that they got to put in public in the court, um, were things that the prosecution was going to challenge that they, it's not the other things that the prosecution couldn't challenge or (laughs) wouldn't have been able to, to mount a strong challenge to those things weren't brought out in court in front of the public. Of course, the public's not really getting access to the court anyway, but anyway, they, you know yeah. they are. It is available on the internet to at least select people or whatever. Yeah. Um, the 
it, it's a foregone conclusion. Yeah. Uh, is what it seems. I, and of course, the most important thing I think is that they um, they actually freed him and rearrested him um, under a new indictment, which is substantially the same as the old indictment, but in, included new information um, and about some things that weren't directly related to what the original indict. I mean, like the charge is the same, but the the circumstances. They, they've yeah. changed, oh, right. um, and they only uh, introduced this. This is the U.S. government that did this course. I mean, yeah. that introduced the, the superseding indictment. Yeah. Um, they only uh, they only made it available like six weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, hard for a defense team to put together um, a strong defense for this new information in that amount of time, especially under COVID lockdown and so forth. Yeah. Anyway, like it's it seems to be being handled in a way that's terribly unfair to Julian Assange which is exactly what you i expected expect, but yeah. um and it's it's being very much hidden from public view yeah well and you can expect more of that when he gets over here so oh yeah we might never see him again yeah i mean that may be the end of it like, yeah that could be just it yeah if they get him over into virginia yeah that might be the last we ever see of julian assange yeah um and this is something that people should be up in arms about. This is an absolute attack on press freedom. Oh, yeah, without question. Without question. And, um, I mean, we've talked about this case before, and as as things go forward and we get more information, I definitely we'll, intend to talk about this I was more. Gonna say, we're going to probably end up doing a couple of podcasts on this mm -hmm. before it's all said and done. Yeah, or at least talking about it in a couple of podcasts. Yeah. Well, it depends on how much we find out and how this all kind of plays out. Yeah. Um, well, I guess we should just wrap up there. We're already over an hour again. Yeah. Um, we said we were going to go short and we went long. <laughs> yeah. Well, we didn't go as long as last, last week. So yeah. we're, we're catching back up though, everybody. Yeah. And, uh, we'll be back to our normal, like 45 minutes or so. Yeah. Soon. Yeah. Maybe. M yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Depends on what the news does. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of politicking to talk about in the next yeah, seven weeks. Exactly. All right. So. We're at the height of it. And we haven't even done the um, the deep dive into Biden and Trump. Yeah, we still got to do that. Yeah. It's coming, though. Fun we'll, stuff. Yeah, we'll get there. So if if you want to know who to vote for, yeah. come here, and we'll tell you that neither of those guys is the person to <laughs> yeah, vote right. for. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and um, we uh, plan, we're back on Friday schedule now for yeah, a little while. for a minute, yeah. Okay, so we plan to be back here next week when we finally get this right. Um in the meantime, you know, follow us on Facebook and uh, iTunes and Podbean or and or Podbean. Yeah, all um, those things work. Like and subscribe. Share. Share. Please share. Yeah. Sharing helps. <laughs> um, especially because Facebook has once again decided to hide uh, my tags. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I don't understand why. They, they tell me apparently that uh, when I notify my friends and family... Um, that I have, uh, that we have new content available at the Liberty Mike. That is spam. Apparently, that's Facebook for you. So, and I, I sent them a little message saying, "Do you understand what your site is for?" Uh, <laughs> they I have don't. not gotten a response. They don't know what their site is for. <laughs> I that's have the, not gotten a the short answer. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, join us again next week. And in the meantime, try and stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm -hmm.